everybody welcome back to wonderful plant wednesday sorry looking a little rougher than usual today uh, if you see on our facebook page we're installing a living shoreline on the morris river this week and i just got back from that excuse all the mud um but i'm still here ready for wonderful plant wednesday because i love talking about these plants with you guys and if you're new, Wonderful Plant Wednesday is where we talk. Oh, I'm Sarah Babulis, uh, Habitat Project Coordinator for the Partnership for the Delaware Estuary. And here on Wonderful Plant Wednesday, we talk about native plants that you can plant in your yard to help with clean water, healthy habitats, strong communities throughout the Delaware Estuary, which is the mission um, that really supports us here at the Partnership for the Delaware Estuary. If you have any questions about the plant we're talking about, Feel free to leave them in the comments and I will answer them as I see them or um, after the live is over. So just in the, in, the, in the comments, I'll see them. And thanks for watching. So let's get to today's plant. This is really one of my garden favorites, guys. I think I was a little excited though about this one and probably should have waited another week to showcase this one because I only have this one flowering right now, one stalk flowering, but you can see there's many other ones coming and I have a whole nother plant over there as well that I might show you that isn't flowering at all yet so maybe a little early here so because it will look great and hopefully probably next week anyway this is Liatra spicata Liatra spicata uh, also known as dense blazing star or gay feather or marsh blazing star it has lots and lots of names none of them are really that interesting honestly the int about what they mean the most interesting part is that liatris the genus no one knows what it means it was named so long ago that kind of the meaning behind it has been lost uh, over time so no one really knows what that means um, spicata as you maybe guess means spiky because it comes in these spikes of flowers it's a clumper and it has these spikes of flowers um, it also may be related to um, the fact that it kind of looks like an ear of corn which also has like spikes like this so it look, looks like the spike on, on a thing of corn um, and then dense blazing stars just because it has kind of these little flowers that look maybe like stars and they are very dense <laughs> um, gay feather it's just happy and and kind of these are kind of fluffy little flowers it's just a happy happy plant guys it's a very cute happy plant um, this is a great garden plant great garden plant um, because it is a clumper so it kind of stays where you put it it is a makes a great cut flower you can cut off the stems and you know bring them inside put them into water they look great they look unique they're kind of different than some other flowers um, and also I encourage you obviously don't cut them all off leave them for all the pollinators and stuff who also love this plant it's just um, a great plant all around uh, it's so so pretty I, again I wish a little more was blooming but um, but it also is very interesting let's get a close-up of some of those flowers so these are actually called these are like uh, individual flower heads they're called and each one then has um, a few little tiny florets on each of those each of those flower heads which is kind of interesting and pollinators and stuff will go in there and you know get nectar from each of each of those little florets um, it doesn't get very tall only about two to four feet maybe higher depending on your soil but it's a very adaptable plant to all different types of soil um, it can take clay soil it likes prefers other things but it can handle clay it can handle drought it can handle some moist soil it can really handle anything and everything sorry if you got kicked off there sorry um, oh look we got a little bee bee coming there to help us pollinate yay um, if it does get too tall and it's in any sort of shade, it may um, need staking, but I don't seem to have that problem here. When I, I did move this plant here and where I had it before, it did have some, um, did need some staking. So just be careful about that. Um, sun, sun, full, full sun. This is like the most full sun plant that you could ever, like if it's at any shade and it will reach towards the sun and require staking and things like that. So watch out for that. Interesting fact, it grows from these things called corms. C 
C-O-R-M-S. It's like a tiny little, it's a swollen stem is really what it is. It's under the ground and kind of every year when it dies back, it stores all its energy into this corm and then regrows the next year. Um, it's kind of an interesting interesting thing. It's kind of like a little, compared to a rhizome or um, something like that, but it's called a corm, C-O-R-M, so that's very cool. And it helps it get make it through dormancy during the winter. Um, there's about 40 species in this genus in North America. Um, it's great. It's, it hybridizes really easily throughout its range. So there's lots of different kinds of liatris out there in the wild. Birds love the seeds of this one. I've seen like goldfinches and things eating off of this. Um, some insects eat the foliage. Not uh, not a whole lot. Another interesting fact is that it. Um, blooms from the top down. So these are already done blooms at the top here and it continuing to bloom down. It's going really far down there too. And this one you can see is just going to start soon at the top. A lot of plants that are kind of built like this, like think lobelia, if you're familiar with lobelia, uh, cardinal flower, kind of has a similar shape but grows, blooms from the bottom up. Um, it keeps its attractive shape in the fall, so it's kind of a different kind of thing for the garden. I think it's really, really a cool shape, cool flower structure, all those um, things that are kind of, kind of different. Um, there is two species of flower moth in the genus uh, Shinion um, that are hosts on this. The larvae are hosts of this. Uh, flower genus in general and the cool thing about them is that they're purple the moths are purple so you know they're made for this plant the moths will come and lay their eggs on this plant and you'll never even see them because the moths are purple I might put a picture of those um, in the comments um, but those they're called flower moths and the, the um, caterpillars eat the leaves but nothing crazy um, no insects or pests are really gonna like destroy this plant. You won't even hardly notice it. Um, rabbits and deer may eat it, so be careful about that. Um, anyway, this honestly, it just looks so good and it's so interesting looking and it will live anywhere, full sun. Soil can be very, can you know, uh, can tolerate a lot of different soil conditions, but is, um, needs full sun, but that's it. And it's so cool looking. I like it so much. I'll have to show it to you maybe a different week when it more is blooming. And I have another one over there. You can see from far away, it kind of has a cool shape um, going on there that I really like. And when it's all blooming, it looks great. All right. Well, that's it about Liatris, guys. I don't see any comments, but if you have one after um, the show today, feel free to leave it in the comments and I'll check in about it. Um, we'll be back next week, hopefully in the afternoon again, and hope to see you then. Thanks for watching!